All right, this is episode two of Perceptual Supplements, where we take um, some basic perceptions about the world and uh, tie them in with Marshall McLuhan. Conversely, if you don't know McLuhan, we take some basic perceptions about the world uh, informed by McLuhan and tie them into what you already know. Uh, It goes both ways. So, um, now that we've considered the environment as a space and the relationship between space and environment through our senses, which are all mediated through our bodies as bodies, as our bodies being the mediator between space and environment and our ability for creation being that of artificing our artificial civilized work, you know, um, cosmopolitan, like city dwelling world, uh, uh, you know, um, within, within nature at large. Uh, we can look at, at how this is more talked about, um, uh, more commonly, um, since uh, the Newtonian and Cartesian world has blown up with electricity and new uh, physics conceptions that go beyond uh, physical matter, you know, like quantum physics and relativity and whatnot. So, so now we're in the postmodern age of social construction. So everyone has their own um, idea of what their environment is made of. Um, constructivism which can uh, um which uh goes from let's say Gian Battista Vico um a couple hundred years ago up through Jean 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 Piaget um in our century or actually in the 20th century um uh you know we de- uh, there's this idea that we develop we sort of feel out and model and get an idea of our environment and build up our idea of what space we're in um and we develop our mind and our cognition our perception and our self through constant experimentation and play in relation to our environment so so babies sort of you know feel their bodies out you know and feel their mother's breasts and then feel you know the world and their crib and get a sense of of where the boundaries of their bodies meet the outer world and uh play with things and so slowly learn how physics works and how objects work and how gravity f- feels and how how machines um monkey motion causality plays out and more um you know um so so but th- this is through play this is through modeling the world and testing those models and sometimes they work and sometimes they fall apart and um and so this this is uh constructivism now we um, are born into the wor- world of the external surface appearances of things. So you can look at a TV, and uh, unless you get up really close and you notice the uh, the phosphors, the red, green, and blue phosphors, and or um, uh, uh, liquid crystal elements, which are variously uh, changing to afford a backlight to shine through them, or of course LED lights um, turning on on and off comprising uh, the fundamental image of the on the tv um unless you get up really close and l- look at it and go oh wow this is just red green and blue light flickering all over the place right if you see a tv screen what you're really looking at is uh, the content the movie or the tv show or uh the live video stream or the cg graphics or whatever uh we see the surface up appearances of everything like uh, my uh my chest of drawers here is made of wood and my uh, bookshelf up here is made of um, compressed fiberboard that looks like wood. But uh, I know that out of uh, the experience of having, you know, um, seen what they're made of. Uh, to the naked eye, they both look like black painted wood, right? Um, the surface appearances. How do you get through the surface of appearances of stuff? Well, you um, either uh, figure it out. Or you just get told what's going on beneath the surface appearances of stuff. And right now, all of our technology is so complicated, and most people are so distracted and busy with the particulars of their life that they don't get to the bottom of anything, and they pay other experts uh, or listen to other people to tell them what it is that I'm looking at. What am I looking at? Um, I can't tell what it is. I'm going to go ask someone else to tell me what I'm, what I'm looking at, and I'm going to trust them, and I'm going to see the world through their perception, and whatever they describe to me, I'm going to learn as what it is is happening. Um, this is a role of specialism, um, because ultimately, really, we're just kind of on our own little, like, uh, our bodies are related to their immediate environment, and then what's, what's, what's going on beyond these four walls, or beyond the view affords me by my window here, 
I just um, rely on word of mouth um, or or what is seen inside the virtual space of my computer screen or my television. And I say virtual because it's not a because it is a space, but it is not a real environment. The real environment is the medium itself in front of my face, the TV screen or the computer as a physical object. But the space, which my constant interaction with these highly complex, deceiving, illusion creating machines on their surface present to me for direct interaction teaches and entrains and pulls my space into something which is not real but in front of me right that's the content of the medium and uh, so uh, think about um, right uh, books have content right there's all these uh, speculative uh, fantasy and uh, science fiction worlds inside of these hunks of of bound paper with little, you know, black symbols on them we call typographical letters. Um, as we learn to enter into in our the spaces of our mad of our imagination uh, into these this content, we create all sorts of uh, we in, we mire ourselves in more and more complex infinite spaces, uh, uh, which do not actually exist, and uh, and we can use to simulate and model the world either mythically through the content or uh, conceptually and paradigmatically through the structuring of the media itself such as the way books created the Gutenberg galaxy according to McLuhan whence within perspective painting and uh, phys uh, Newtonian and Cartesian space took a on the nature of the medium, the typographical medium itself, and, and, or and also created the mythological, symbolic, um, um, uh, fantasy spaces within which uh, 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 more anthropomorphic entities and uh, directly rela rela relatable characters can then be taken on as content uh, and or as selves. Um, computers, of course, do the same thing much more complexly because there's so m many more dimensions and parameters which are within our computer models of the world. If you think about the Cold War as a as a bunch of, you know, intelligence a a agents inventing game theory and trying to model what those Russians are going to do according to, you know, the game of uh, of um, war, right? And they've created these model worlds and then 20 years later everyone's creating model worlds with um, tabletop gaming, right? Uh, uh, world building, fantasy world building is a result of living in our multi-parametered, computerized, electronic environment within the 20th century. Ev everyone knows how world building works because they're they're taking the systems which they use to understand actual reality and uh, bringing them down into um, uh, you know the, uh, the the Dungeons and Dragons role playing game or their latest uh, you know science fiction novel or video game or fan fiction or whatever you like and so uh this is where in the baudrillardian sense the map um totally erases the territory there's a uh, um and we enter into the simulations of realities because we're relying on other people's models of what's going on and our bodies are not our bodies and our bodies relation to the material environment and our own personal con constructivism of learning of our perceptual construction of the actual physical world is uh, a lot harder than listening to the perspectives of of experts who who give us words and concepts and perceptions and so we exist in a social space where we've cut out the material and are directly short-circuiting my space and your space is em empathically and through communication overwhelming the material environment full of media I uh, hope that helps sort out um, sort of uh, what the 20th century, uh, the chaos of perception of space in the 20th century means. Uh, next time, we will talk a little bit about know-how, which is um, knowledge applied in this social space, the shared social space where our understanding of media is indirect through the perceptions of others as cultural content and as media content, which elides and erases our embodied relation to the physical material of our artificial world.